Uh, okay, so good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to our presentation about the Community engage, uh, Engagement Exchange Program under the IREX organization. My name is Kristina Sheinehova, and on behalf of the US Embassy, I would like to encourage all young people in the Czech Republic uh, involved in the community engagement to apply for this fantastic program. Uh, you can always reach the US Embassy for more information, but most importantly, today we have a special guest. Uh, I would like to introduce you Mr. Les Miles from IREX, who will introduce the Community Engagement Exchange Program. Uh, so please take advantage uh, of asking him, uh, him any question you might have today. And our second guest, uh, also a very important one, is a successful participant of the first cohort of the CE program, Mr. Robert Lakatos. Uh, welcome, guys, and Les, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us live, or if you are watching this later, please know that we are very excited that you are here to learn about the Community Engagement Exchange Program. This is a program funded by the U.S. Department of State and the U.S. government, and it's supported in its implementation by IREX, which is the organization that I work for. It's a nonprofit global development and education organization. During today's session, we are going to provide an overview of the Community Engagement Exchange talk about the applicant profile, who might be the right person to apply. And we will also talk about all of the components of the program and what support will be available to participants. We'll close out with the recruitment and selection timeline. We'll hear from one of our successful applicants. And if there are any questions, we would welcome those. Recognizing that many of you may be viewing this not live, please know that you are able to contact us via email and share any questions that you have at the end of the presentation. In terms of the program's goals, there are four key objectives. First, we are hoping to develop young people's technical skills. Second, develop their leadership skills. Third, build mutual understanding and cross-cultural understanding and fourth, develop a network. This is a program for people who are passionate about improving their communities. We recognize that communities around the world, including the United States and the Czech Republic, are facing many difficult challenges. And although these challenges may appear differently in different contexts, many of them are sharing similar roots or have the same causes of the challenge. And so this program is all about exchanging how we are approaching those different challenges in our contexts and gives us an opportunity to build a network of support. Who can apply for this program? Applicants must be between the ages of 21 and 28. This is a program for younger people who are at the beginning of their professional careers, or even people who are still students. Um, these may be people who recently finished high school or are now in college or even doing a master's program. And it's also available to people who have already started working and have a, a job or an internship. The minimum requirement for experience is that you have at least two years of volunteer experience. And this could be part-time experience. If you have been actively advocating for some improvement or change in your community, whether that is in a student group or some kind of association or working with a nonprofit organization, anything that you have been doing to support your community over the past two years would qualify. So please don't feel that you have to have a lot of experience or have a long resume in order to be qualified. This program is for people who are just getting started. It is important that every applicant have a high level of English proficiency. And this is because part of the program involves working in a US organization for 12 weeks. And in order to be successful working in a US environment, we want to be sure you have the skills to be successful using English. 
If you are able to understand this presentation and my speed of speaking, most likely you have the skills that are required for this program, although we will conduct an English test to make sure that you have the requisite skills. Usually that's done via Duolingo, although if you have an IELTS or a TOEFL score, those are also acceptable. And if you completed university in English, you would be exempt from the English testing requirement. Another requirement is that you work in one of the five program themes, and they are listed on the slide. First is civic dialogue and peace building. This is any form of community engagement that brings people together and builds community across differences. Another avenue is open and participatory government. This includes any initiatives for transparency and accountability of government, any form of civic engagement, democracy strengthening, or public policy advocacy. A third area is resilience and sustainable development. This includes environmental issues. So if you are working to clean up your community, manage waste better, launch recycling programs or sustainable renewable energy programs, if you're working in some form of sustainable agriculture, all of those would be acceptable avenues for your participation. The fourth area is women and gender issues. Women's issues could include women's empowerment, women's entrepreneurship, uh, women's health, women's education, and countering domestic violence. Gender issues also encapsulates LGBTQ issues. And finally, youth engagement. Any form of program that is supporting youth, recognizing that they are the future. Uh, if you are working in any capacity or volunteering with youth, then you would be eligible for this program. Oftentimes, people ask me, what makes a really competitive application, or how should I fill in my application? Like I said before, this is not a program where it matters very much what your academic experience is, what your grades are. It doesn't matter if you have a long resume with many professional experiences. What really matters is your essay questions. And I know that it can feel a little bit scary to write several essays in English, but I promise you that it's okay. And the easy thing about it is that you just have to write about yourself you have to answer questions about what it is that you care most about in your community and what you have been doing to respond so far. How are you addressing a challenge in your community? And once you've told about yourself and what you have been doing, you can share your vision for the future. How do you want things to change? How do you want things to get better? What are your hopes and dreams for your community in the next few years? And finally, to make a very compelling application, connect all of the things that you've been doing and all of your goals to this exchange experience. How would traveling to the United States and working in a professional practicum or completing a leadership development experience help you reach your goals? If you can articulate how you want to learn and grow and how that would benefit you and your community, then you will have a very strong application. I want to note that this is a program for people who haven't had these types of experiences before. So if you've already participated in similar exchanges or have traveled extensively in the United States or have already done many leadership development programs, this is probably not the program for you. Uh, this is meant for people who are just getting a start and are showing the first signs of leadership potential. Here I have put on the slide three examples of applicants who might be good for this program. In the first example, we have Edna. Edna graduated high school, did not attend college or university, and instead started working immediately after high school in a local newspaper. And Edna has noticed that there's been an increase in hate crimes toward the LGBTQ plus community where she lives, and she wants to do something about it. She feels that's not right. And so she started out by creating a podcast to combat stigma and to share stories about people in the LGBTQ community and how they have been 
uh, affected by recent acts of violence and to showcase them as people who everyone should get to know and who should be welcome and part of the community. Her goal is to scale this up and to reach more and more people. She has just a small start right now. This podcast is something new, but she wants it to be bigger. And she actually wants to create an online website or a platform for storytelling, almost like an online magazine, and sees CEE Exchange as an opportunity to learn those skills, to expand from podcasts to online media presence, and to do this even more effectively. Another example is RJ. He's a university student studying political science, and he is very frustrated knowing that not many people vote in his country, and especially young people. This is a common problem in the United States too. RJ has been doing something. He has been working with his professors at the university to try to engage college students and get them more active in the electoral process. But he would like to take this vision further. And when he graduates, he has this goal of expanding his programming to high school students. He wants to to go to several different high schools and start civic engagement at a young age. He knows how valuable it is to work with youth and get them excited and help them understand their rights and their responsibilities as active citizens. So he knows that there are organizations doing this kind of work in the US and he's interested to learn about those models and bring them back and adapt them in his own country. And the last profile is Myla. Myla is an artist, she does murals, and she doesn't have a formal job. She just has many different jobs that she does at all at the same time. But one of her projects has been a TikTok account where she has been showing different artwork and talking about the experiences of women in her community. And unfortunately in her community, women don't have the same rights as men and are treated differently. And she views that as unfair and not an equal treatment or equal rights. So she's been telling those stories and she wants to increase her following, but she also noticed that there was an interest in learning art that, her, that the women and girls in particular who were watching wanted to learn how to make their own art. And Mila is not an art teacher. She wasn't trained in that. So during CEE, she would love to learn actual art teaching techniques so that she can improve how she's teaching the women and girls and also better storytelling techniques. Uh, of course, she's done well on her own, but knows that there's room for improvement to strengthen all of her projects. So these are three examples of people who are just starting out, who are finding and using their voice and advocating for positive change in their communities. And if that sounds like you, then this might be a great program and an excellent opportunity for you to advance your skills. Now let's talk about the program components. If you are selected, one of the main things that you will do is participate in a practicum at a US host organization. This means that you would be matched with a US organization that's doing something similar to what you're doing here in the Czech Republic. And that could look like LGBTQ plus advocacy here matched with the same in the US or countering domestic violence here matched with an organization doing the same in a city in the US. And during this project, you will set goals for yourself, learning goals and objectives, and you will create a work plan with your US host collaborators to ensure that this is a rich learning experience for you and for your host organization, because surely they want to know about your story and how you've been approaching these issues in your community. You will spend 32 hours each week in this practicum, which is almost like a full-time job in the United States and should give a really deep and rich experience and a way for you to develop your technical skills. The second piece of the program is the Leadership and Civic Engagement Academy. Now, because the practicums occur in cities across the United States, this Leadership Academy is virtual. You will read materials, watch videos, participate in forums, and join weekly live sessions with experienced facilitators and leadership coaches 
who help you to develop into an ethical values-based leader who has the skills to motivate other people in your community toward positive change, uh, to inspire collective action, and who also has the skills to navigate conflict and challenges as they arise and be in this work for the long term. We know that so often this type of work, community development can be exhausting and it can lead to burnout. And maybe you're already feeling that even at a young age, and you're wondering if you can stay in this for the long term. So we talk about that a lot in this curriculum and we build a network of support. We talk about self-care and resilience, but we also talk about community care and how to lean on others and get their support as needed throughout your career. The third big piece of the program is what happens when you return back home. And this is called the Community Engagement Project. This is a project that you plan while you're in the United States for implementation over the several months when you return home. It doesn't have to be a big project, or something totally new and different, but it's meant to be a small scale pilot an opportunity for you to take something that you learned in the United States and try it out in your home country context, to adapt it to your local environment and see how it works. And maybe it's very successful and it's something you wanna scale up over many years, or maybe it's something that didn't work out and you have some lessons learned and you can try something else the next time. But it's meant to be an immediate opportunity for you to leverage your network and all of your leadership skills and your technical skills to try something different. There is a lot of support available to you when you travel to the United States. I know that that can be a scary experience. I know the United States is very far. There may be a lot of opportunities close by here in Europe. And, and I recognize it's hard to leave your family or your school or your work responsibilities. But if you choose to go to the United States, I want you to know that you will be very well supported. You will have a professional leadership coach, first of all, who will be supporting your leadership development. We have coaches who have worked with executives of Fortune 500 companies, they've worked with university presidents, and they've worked with hundreds and hundreds of fellows over the past years who are similar to you, who are looking for an opportunity to level up their leadership skills. So no matter where you are in your leadership journey, I'm confident that this coach will help you develop your skills as well. We also have a very special mentorship component on the community engagement project. And these mentors have usually gone through US government exchanges, just like this one. They can help support you through cross-cultural adjustment and the challenges of moving to a new country and living there and adjusting to a new culture. But they're also seasoned experts who have been working in community development for many years and can help coach and mentor you along your way as you consider your career pathway and what you want to achieve. We also have a large network of global civil society activists who you will be plugged into if you join this program. There are a large number of US host organizations, fellows, alumni, mentors and specialists, and members of the US Department of State, whether here in the US Embassy or in Washington DC, who are all very eager to support you throughout this experience. Let's talk about a few of the logistics if you're selected. Before you arrive, you would need to take the English proficiency exam. I mentioned earlier that English proficiency is a requirement. Usually we do a Duolingo exam, but if you have a TOEFL or an IELTS score or, can, or completed university in English, you can be exempted. You will need to complete a medical evaluation. The purpose of this is not to exclude you, but just to make sure that we can assist you with any mental health or physical health issues that you may have and ensure that you have a very successful and healthy time in the United States. So I hope that you don't feel intimidated or that you might be excluded because of any disability you might have. I want you to know that this is a program fully committed to supporting people with disabilities or people with mental or physical health issues. And that is why we are so eager to see your medical forms and help you connect to appropriate resources. You will also need to have a passport and obtain a J-1 visa. 
And the J-1 visa is a specific type of visa that the U.S. Embassy will help you apply for and secure if you are successful as an applicant in the program. You would also participate in a pre-departure orientation, which is an online activity that helps you understand the program and set expectations and learn about all of the policies so that you are set up for a positive experience. During the fellowship, you will have support from your host organization. You will have a supervisor who helps you set goals and assigns you tasks, who provides you feedback and who you can go to with any questions or professional development questions or goals. You will also have a peer counterpart at your organization who is like a buddy who will assist you with any tasks like finding the printer or using Microsoft Word or Excel if those are new softwares for you. You will also have an IREX advisor, someone from my team at IREX, who will be there for you every step of the way, from your placement with a U.S. host organization to helping you get your visa, ensuring you have your flight tickets, uh, supporting you when you're in country, ensuring you're progressing through the academy appropriately. And if anything goes wrong, or if you have any challenges or issues, maybe you get sick or something happens, know that you will have an IREX advisor dedicated to supporting you through that experience. You will never feel alone or be alone in this. We already talked about the leadership coach and the mentor that you will have. And another exciting aspect of CEE is the homestay. You would be living with a U.S. family during the entire 12 weeks of your practicum. And this is a family that will be eager to learn about your culture and will be eager to share their perspective of American culture and the vast diversity of what that encapsulates. In terms of logistics, fellows are placed in cities across the United States, they stay in these homestays, and they receive a stipend to cover the cost of the homestay, as well as meals and transportation expenses. Typically, the meals are mostly included in the homestay costs, and so the stipend is modest. This is not a program that's extremely fancy with thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars, but it's a budget that's enough for you to live comfortably like uh, an average American family and have enough to cook your meals at home and use public transportation. Of course, it can be very expensive if you eat out at restaurants or you're taking taxis or Ubers all the time. So you would need to budget carefully and take public transit and eat at home as much as possible and, and then your stipend would be sufficient. Healthcare costs in the United States are very high and so fortunately there is an accident and sickness coverage which is like a, an insurance. So if you needed to go to the hospital or see a doctor then most of those expenses would be covered and any major expenses could be covered by the program. And I already mentioned disability support. If you need any form of uh, assistive technology or a mobility device, then the program would be able to cover the cost of those things to ensure your successful participation. As we reach the, new, the end of the presentation, I want to give you the timeline. And most important is the top line about the application. The application is open right now and it closes on November 30th. So you have a few weeks left if you're watching this today, we're recording on November 4th. Uh, know that my recommendation is for you to open the application. I know it can be a little bit big and scary to think about the entire process and see all of these steps. The first thing to do is just to open the application, log in your demographics and your email address, and then read through the questions. You don't even have to respond right away. Just look at what is being asked and start to think about how you would like to respond. Once you log in and you submit your email address, then the team at IREX will start emailing you regularly to help remind you to complete your application. So if you're someone who could use a reminder, please log in and, and we'll be sure to follow up with you. In December, you would be submitted, you will be invited to submit an interview if you pass an initial screening of applicants. And this interview would be conducted online. It's a one-way interview where you just record answers to certain questions. 
And then if you're selected as a semifinalist, your interview is scored. And ultimately in April, 2023, we plan to select the finalists and the alternates for the program. Recognizing that you apply in November and you don't hear back until April, that seems like a long time, but I want to assure you it's because we're reading every application carefully, we're watching all of those video interviews. In fact, each application and interview is scored by three different people because we want this to be a fair process and we want to make sure that we have diverse perspectives on who would make for a good CEE participant. So please note we take this very seriously and, and we will thoughtfully consider every single application that comes into us. Then if you are selected from May through July, you would take an English proficiency exam and you would submit your medical form and any other documentation that's required. In August through September, you complete your J-1 visa interview and then from September through December would be the pre-departure orientation, preparing for the program. I haven't mentioned up until now when this program actually takes place. It's, it's the in-person exchange in the United States from January through April, 2024. You might be thinking, wow, that's a long time away. I don't know what I'll be doing at that time. I wanna encourage you to apply anyway. Even if you're not sure what your plan is going to be in 2024, this gives you an opportunity. It opens a door for you and it gives you a lot of time to plan ahead. This is a three month experience. It's not something you can decide to just do the next day. You need to plan ahead. So it's actually very helpful if you know by April, 2023 that you would travel in January, 2024. After the exchange takes place, you would then implement your community engagement project over the next several months. And, in, and then there's an opportunity for exchanges where even your US host could travel to your country like Czech Republic and participate in a two-week exchange with you and learn about what you're doing and support you in your project. So a lot of exciting opportunities lie ahead. What is the next step? I've said it before, I'll say it again. I put it in big letters. The next step is to apply. Please note that the application closes on November 30th. That is 11.59 p.m. in Washington, D.C. There is no exception. You cannot apply late. And the only way to apply is through the link through the website. So please do go to irex.org slash CEE and you will find the link to the application there. If you have any questions, especially if you're not watching this live and you want to write to the CEE team, our email address is apply.cee at irex.org apply.cee at irex.org. And we welcome any questions that we haven't answered in this webinar. You can also follow us on social media if you wanna see what current fellows are doing, learn about their exchanges, and of course, get reminders to submit your application by November 30th. At this time, I'm very pleased to introduce one of our 2023 CEE successful applicants. He is about to go to the United States in April 2023, and I'd like you to hear from him and recognize that there are people out there here in Czech Republic who have applied, who have gotten in, and to inspire you to join as well. So please do introduce yourself and share Thank you. whatever you like with prospective applicants. So, hello everyone. My name is Robert Lakator. I applied for this program for CE 2023 and for me to apply for this program was a really big opportunity just because what just because of what the program offers and what you really can achieve with CEE and not so many people know about this opportunity because at first when I saw this on social media I was really amazed what the program is really good structured and what so many opportunities can have for so many people. And for me, for example, I'm a social media manager, I'm a photographer, filmmaker, and when I want to improve in these things, 
I can really, really do it with this program and I recommend it to everyone to apply, so. All right, thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing your experience. I see that we do have a question in the chat. It says, hello, I would like to know if there is a list of the organizations that are involved in the program and the exchange itself would be from January to April, 2024. This is correct. The exchange will be from January through April, 2024 in the United States. And then in the months following that, you would implement the follow-on project here in Czech Republic. In terms of the list of organizations, we haven't published a list of current hosts. In fact, the very first cohort of CEE participants is in the United States right now. This program had a delayed start because of COVID-19 and the first group just arrived. Uh, but basically, we conduct a very tailored search based on the work that you are doing if you are selected and match you with an organization that does something very similar. I was just in Hungary yesterday and met with a participant who had a very specific interest in using circus as a way to develop youth skills and youth confidence. And we didn't have a connection in that area before, but we did a lot of searching and found an organization in Chicago called Cirque Esteem, which does exactly the same thing, developing youth skills and confidence through circus. And that's just one example of a very tailored specific match. And I feel very confident that we can find an organization that would be a good fit where you can exchange technical expertise and learn from each other about how you're addressing similar issues in your communities. For now, that is the only question I see in the chat. So I wanna thank you if you've joined us live. I wanna thank you if you've made it this far in the presentation, you must be interested. And so I'm going to encourage you to take the next step to go to irex.org CEE to find the application link and, and at least put your name in, put your email address and read the application. You can do this. I know it can feel intimidating or it can feel like a lot. It can feel far away, but there's no time like the present. Please go on and we'd love to, we'd love to hear from you, whether through your application or from any questions in the inbox. So thank you everyone for participating. Thank you to the U.S. Embassy for hosting this event and we look forward to seeing your applications soon. Goodbye.